Morning folks and welcome back. I'm back out in the woods today with, with Tom and I'm really grateful because we, we've just collected a load of firewood and prepared it and <laughs> teamwork is dream work. Um, we're going to be doing some baking today uh, and we're going to be showing you four different ways to bake out in the woods. To bake or roast in camp, you need to have that all round heat. So unlike when you just cook over a fire where you've got all the heat from underneath, you need to have that heat all the way around the thing that you're cooking. Um, if you're roasting meat, you can get around that by, by cooking on a spit. And you, know, you can rotate the meat on that spit over the fire and it, and it gradually gets that heat all the way around by you actually physically moving the thing that you're, you're roasting. But if you want to bake, you need to have some sort of oven to contain that heat and get heat above as well as below the thing that you're cooking. The first oven I'm going to show you is the good old Dutch oven. Um, I have several of these and they're just a, a cast iron pot, um, sometimes with feet on, and they have a lid with a lip around the outside of the, um, of the lid here. And they're designed so that you put them over your fire, you can hang them up or put them on a grill or even just on the embers and then you can load up coals uh, onto the lid here, onto the top, and you get that heat from above as well as the heat from underneath. Being cast iron, it holds that heat really well, and you get that kind of all around uh, heat that you need for baking and roasting. The next thing I've got here is a good old billy pot. This is a 14 centimeter zebra billy can, and this works really well as an oven. If you can find a, a grill that fits nicely inside, you can use the lid as a door and normally um, I would have clips that would hold that, um, that lid on. Unfortunately I left my clips at home, completely forgot about them, but I'm going to use a stick and just wedge it in there to hold the door shut um, while, while I bake in it. And you can just put that in the embers, you can rest a few um, big long embers over the top of the billy can and you'll get that heat, that all around heat, and that works really well for baking. It's inexpensive, it doesn't weigh very much, unlike the Dutch oven, which is really heavy. Um, and obviously it doubles as your normal cooking pot, so it's a really good way of baking in camp. The next thing we're gonna be using is my reflector oven. Um, I have a video on, on making this. I made this a few years ago, but it is an old video, so apologies for the quality. Um, this is a, a clever system. You put this next to your fire, so you'd have your fire in front of it, a nice hot fire, and it cooks by reflection. So you have direct heat from, from the front, obviously, um, and then heat is reflected off the bottom, off the top, and off the back, and it gives that all round heat that you need to, to bake. Uh, folds down flat, it's reasonably lightweight because it's made of aluminium. And, um, and works pretty well. It's not as fast as uh, baking in a Dutch oven or in the billy pot, um, but it does do a good job. And then the fourth oven we're gonna be using is the Bemco Backpacker Oven. Um, I borrowed this off my friend Ginge. Um, he had one, I wanted one. I wanted to buy one from the States, but uh, shipping and import duty just uh, made it silly <laughs> but uh, this is a this is a cool system uh, it's an oven with a door it's got a thermometer on the side and it's designed to work with a gas stove uh, you could use them over over a campfire um, but I'm going to be using gas on this only because I don't want to get it all sooty because obviously it's not mine <laughs> if it was mine I probably would um, but yeah it's uh, it's adjustable there's a little uh, flap on the top so you can control the heat inside and obviously you can um, gauge it using the little thermometer on the side. Right, we're going to get a fire lit and Tom's going to put his culinary skills to use and make some scones so that we can uh, try these four different systems out and make a bit of a comparison. Tom's going to light the fire this morning. We're just using good old birch bark as tinder. We've just scraped a load up, fluffed it up, um, and sitting on that little piece there. And Tom's going to use a good old ferro rod. Go. 
Go for it, Tom. Yes. Well done. Good man. So just lay them across so they're resting on here, look. They're resting up on there, look. There we go. Yeah. So Tom's going to make his famous scones. What have you got there in the bag, Tom? I've got um, self-raising flour, bacon powder and salt. Excellent. So is that butter you're putting in there, Tom? Yes. How much have you got in there? I've got 125 grams, which is equivalent to half a block of butter. Half a block. What we'll do is we'll put the um, recipe for this in the description box. So we're gonna do two different types of scone here. We're gonna make some cheese and jalapeno scones, and then we're gonna make some fruit scones. So I'm just grating some cheese onto Tom's rolled out dough here. Is that enough, Tom? Yep, that's enough. We'll save a bit to go on the top then, can't we? All right, we get a few of these jalapenos in then, Tom. Yep. Might be a bit of juice that comes out of them, it's the only thing, eh? Yeah. Baking police after us, Tom. <laughs> you shouldn't twist the cutter. You got, I reckon, one right in there, look. It's a pastry brush, eh?
Oh, I think I've got this. Got that like that. Move that up. So that space. No. So that space there. Have I got this yet, Dad? Yeah, you're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> they're very well done. <laughs> oh, yes. And the last two I'm going to do in the old Vemco oven, but I'm going to use um, a gas burner for this, like I said earlier. Um, I've saved this to the end because I knew I was going to have a bit of a juggling act uh, with the three ovens that needed the fire. And um, as it turned out, two of them burnt anyway, <laughs> just because I was concentrating on the other two. And yeah, the one in the billy can just got really hot and, um, and they burnt, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I'm going to get this one fired up now. Um, I can keep an eye on it with the thermometer and um, once that's up to temperature, it doesn't take very long, less than a minute to get up to temperature um, and then we can, we can fire the last two. They've all come out pretty well. I'm happy. Um, you know, each oven has its its merits and its downsides. Um, the the big cast iron Dutch oven. I mean, they're brilliant. That's by far my my favourite way of um, of baking for sure. But they're really heavy and they're bulky. Um, so if you've got to carry them, there's you know, forget it really. <laughs> the uh, reflector oven is great. You've got a lot more control with it, and you can see it. Obviously, you can see what you're baking, so you can. You could adjust them and turn them um, as you go, and that's these first ones, the ones that are a little bit more pale. Mm. But Tom reckons I they're the nicest looking ones. I, I reckon that they're going to be, I reckon they're going to be the most, the best ones with moisture in. The least more, dry. The least dry ones. The least dry. Yeah. I think the thing to take away from this is that you've you've got to be on it. You've got to be paying attention and checking. <laughs> that Billy Cam one just uh, well, that just got so hot. It's a it's a small space. Um, and uh, I just had way too much heat on it. So it's probably an idea to just to drag some coals away from your fire and, um, and keep it away from the, the main heat of the fire. It probably would have stood a better Ooh. chance. And the, uh, the Bemco gas oven, they've come out pretty well as well. Um, the fact you've got a thermometer on it so you can keep track of the temperature in there is really good. I think uh, the, the time has come to try them though, Tom. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to let you choose the fruit one. We're going we're gonna to try one and we'll share it. And then I'll choose the jalapeno and cheese one, and we'll share Just it. as long as you don't choose that jalapeno one, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> oh, it looks good. That's really good. I'm giving happy me, with that. Giving me the biggest bit. I'm giving you the biggest bit. Hmm. <laughs> mm. These taste really good. Need some butter and jam and cream. They might need it, but I think the sultanas already make it really mm. nice and moist. Mm. I don't think it needs it. Cool, look at that. Look. That looks incredible. <laughs> yep. Mm. They're really good. Let's see what the burnt one's like inside. Actually, do you know what? That isn't too bad inside. It's still moist. Just a bit crispy. Mm. Mm. 
Well, there you go. Four different ways to bake in camp. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Cheers, Tom.